Hello everybody. Making another video here. As you know, I uh, archive what I'm doing here in the garden because uh, I'm practicing this sacred gardening, this sacred agriculture, and uh, the way I do it, you know, is not very common. So, and um, by archiving like every step I'm doing, I figure later on it'll be useful. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm trying to do a slow pan here. This is the back side of the garden. And I'm standing on the truck, so I'm... These are soya beans here. Got those for um, eating edamame, you know? Like you eat them, uh, eat the beans, you steam them with a bit of salt. There's um, peanuts. This year I organized myself a little better <laughs> and I made one big lane. These are the peanuts I grew last year and I saved the seeds and then um, there's some chia. Okay, I'll get down from this truck and uh, go for a walk and talk about a few things. Today I wanted to, uh, besides archiving, making a video to archive the uh, garden, um, where uh, this is uh, spring 2017, all right? So things are just starting. And um, I'm gonna be adding a bit of comments on uh, insects. Insect, con insect consciousness, okay? All right, uh, let me get down from this truck. All right, I'm back. Um, just gonna walk around here and show you a bit of things that's going on and I just put my sweet potatoes in here. Still have more to do. Um, but this here uh, is interesting. Look, okay, I don't know if you could see this video, all the insects. Let's see here. Um, wow. It's, let me see if I could uh, move it around a bit. Uh, it's, it's hard to capture on a vid, like, you know, on a small little video like this. I'm not a professional and this is a handheld, handheld Kodak clay sport. It's actually good videos, but I don't actually film in high definition because it takes forever to upload a video to like YouTube, you know? They, um, they give you some down, uh, upload, uh, some download speed and download, uh, data allowance, but the upload, they, see, they don't want us to be uploading stuff, you know? They want people to be passive consumers and, uh, and take in whatever they whatever they they want to put up there. <laughs> Anyone who uploads knows about this stuff. Okay, so anyways, um, there's tons of insects here, and this is I made this lane here because I was I figured okay I'm gonna need this um, this raised bed for something. But what popped up here is wild armorant. It's called green armorant. Let me get closer. It's just full of insects. Like really, literally like tons and tons. And there's this insects that are flying above ground here, but there's a lot of them in in, in, um, in the first few uh, inches of the soil. Beetles, all sorts of stuff. And here, um, this, so I'm jumping all over the place, but um, it's a video on insects, like really. And um, there's insects, eating the leaves, insects eating the insects that eat the leaves, like the wasps and things like that. There's the beetles that live here that come up. Look at this beautiful armorant. It's a green armorant. 
and it's interesting because if you look on the side here it has buds so when I top because to, we eat this this is so delicious uh, when you go to this to the store they sell you the seeds okay like they're tiny tiny little seeds the armorant seeds they're in these pods here but you could you could eat the leaves they're they're delicious you could you could chop the stems up and then steam them or just put them in a little bit of, of water of uh, water and um, just slowly like cook them um, you could eat everything in this plant and um, let, let me just before I continue with the insects let me just tell you the story about this uh, armorant I didn't know at first what it was and it wasn't this much because this was just a big lawn that was being mowed every year until I started doing things here. Uh, <laughs> I don't really like mowing grass. I, I, I just don't understand this grass thing. Um, anyways, and then um, when I started like opening, like opening the soil up, seeds just started to germinate of, of what had been dormant in the, in the soil. And this popped up. And I didn't know what it was. So one day this friend of mine, he's from India. No, Bangladesh. Sorry uh, <laughs> about that. And he came here and he was looking at my garden and he was like, oh, you know, he's a, he was a gardener back, then, back there in Bangladesh. And when he came here, it was hard for him, you know, to, to get into the culture and all that. And, and it was even harder to find a job. So he went into nursing school and um, he, he's not practicing what he really loves, which is gardening, you know. So when he came here, he's like, oh my God, he's like, you've got green armorant everywhere. And I was like, really? And here, this is a weed and people call it pigweed, okay? And uh, oh boy, golly, look at that. Can you see this here? Oh man. And um, everything loves pigweeds here like there's so many insects eating this and um the pigs i imagine like it too and so i was like oh really so what is it about this green armorant and he's telling me you know it grows everywhere in bangladesh in, in his country and his family wasn't so rich and um they literally ate this for breakfast you know lunch for dinner they knew a gazillion ways to prepare the to prepare it and um they survived on this stuff a lot of people in other in poor countries survive on here it's weeds people don't want it you know they uh oh wow look at this sorry here this is a uh a sweet potato that's volunteering you know because I probably uh, forgot a small piece of sweet potatoes and when I open this lane any like I, I don't take everything I leave stuff a bit you know and then they volunteer which is like teaches me something you know that sweet potatoes could could be like perennials a little bit you know uh, oh my gosh okay oh wow look at that look at that <laughs> Uh, now these little beetles that are flying everywhere um, they also like um, eat the uh, wood chips you know they put some ramule wood chips and then they convert that see the the fungi start to break down the uh, lignin and it makes it available it breaks down and makes this thing available for other life oh, for other species to continue the chain the cascade that brings it all the way down to soil. This armorant is big, this one here. Um, look at that, let me see, can we see the stems? Here's the stems. Okay, so I'm leaving them here because now this lane, which I, I, I was gonna put, I don't know what in it, you know, but now is it's just gonna be armorant. Okay, so that these insects here is one of the things that when I started gardening with the uh, wood chips, the ramule chipped wood there were so many insects in there it was like I, when I moved the the wood chips maybe not at first but maybe after like a few months and certainly after a year I moved the wood chips and it was so many so many beetles and all sorts of critters in there I just I just started to really like it just impregnated my consciousness of all these insects and how 
how wonderful they were and how useful they were. And uh, I started really to like have, you know, some really uh, positive love feelings for these insects. And now I'm just totally in love with insects. It's like, and I don't know all their names. Uh, I know what they look like. I know where they live. I know what they eat, but I don't know their scientific name. And I don't really care, you know. <laughs> Um, what I know, what I've been learning is when you open your heart to the insect world and you stop seeing them as enemies, um, you, th they enter your awareness, your conscious awareness, and you start to learn things about their conscious awareness, you know? Like you kind of like, you get it all, you get stuff like all of a sudden about the insect world, okay? It's hard to describe here what I'm saying. This here, um, by the way, is uh, chia. Last year I did a little patch and it was awesome. I got like a huge bucket of seeds. And um, this year I, I put them out here and look at that. Got ourselves like, a, and, it, and they're gonna get taller than that, but a wall <laughs> of chia. It is so beautiful. And this one, contrary to the armorant, uh, the insects don't, don't really like to eat on that. You know, it's like there's not one little piece being chewed. And uh, I could see why a lot of farmers here in the south are converting to growing chia. <sighs> it's uh, easy <laughs> and it's drought resistant. And um, I don't know if you can see that. And um, the price on the market must be really high because you try to buy chia, you'll see it's like, whoo, it costs a fortune. So anyways, like back to the insect and the consciousness is that every sentient being, you know, has a awareness, has this awareness, this consciousness. The plants also have like that consciousness, the plant consciousness. This is not things like they talk about a lot, you know, in uh, science and university, you know, you go to agricultural school, uh, you study plant sciences, they're not gonna talk about consciousness, you know. First of all, they wouldn't even know where to begin Second, you know, you can't measure it, you know, you can't measure easily in uh, a ruler or any machine in the material world the uh, consciousness of things, so they skip over it, which is a very important part of sacred gardening or sacred agriculture. And um, because um, sacred, uh, sacred gardening and is really about growing consciousness and uh, healing not about growing crops really per se the um, act of gardening is is the uh, the tool and the the spiritual practice it's the uh, the act of growing and having a relationship with the food crop is really just a pretext to get uh, to connect with creation and to uh, and then to um, remember spiritual things, deep, deep stuff. Okay, I mean we've been so artificially, uh, socially engineered. It's hard to remember anything that pertains to uh, this, your spiritual uh, purpose, your spiritual being. When you're lost in the carnival, eating fake food consuming uh, superficial entertainment and you're disconnected to nature you know okay so this is just starting I got some onions uh, some uh, zucchinis I'm, I'm growing some this year I'm, I have a lot of mint that I'm growing and ginger Okay, this is going to be a, a ginger patch. Last year I grew a lot of turmeric, but not no ginger. <laughs> um, this year is ginger. So, okay, what what more about the insects have I learned? Um, here I mixed basil with uh, tomatoes. And you see the tomatoes are not are doing not so bad here in the south. It's very humid. They tend to uh, 
they tend to rot pretty quickly. It's better to grow the cherry tomatoes. These are heirlooms. Um, I don't remember the name. They're uh, they're really these big uh, purple kind of tomatoes. All right. So, anyways, um, I don't use any fertilizer. Not not even like cow manure, composted cow manure, no compost, nothing. Uh, people have argued on my uh, YouTube channel that the wood chips that I use are, are fer is fertilizer. But I mean, no, I'm sorry uh, to uh, disappoint you, but this is not fertilizer. This is wood chips. <laughs> um, there's a process, okay, um, that converts the wood chips into soil, okay? Um, and I've explained that in other videos. Once it's, it's, it's converted to uh, a composted form of ramiel wood chips, then it is fertile. But it is not fertile just because it was wood chips that are c converted. It's, it's all the fungi, the, the insects, the insect poo, <laughs> the dead insect bodies, it's all of that. It's all the life inside of that chain of, of events that creates the fertility. See, chemicals are not the fertility. Chemicals are something you measure what is left, what is left uh, to be measured in the materials. Look at that. There's a wasp. You see the wasps? They go and they feed on whatever insect is there and uh, everything's in balance. See. This corn uh, is growing inside these peas, so I guess that's how they get some nutrients. Anyways, so um, the compost, the wood chips is not uh, fertilizer because, that, see that would be like saying, you take some banana peels, some, you take your coffee grinds, you take your apple cores, you take all the leftovers in your kitchen and you put it in a bucket and then say, that's plant fertilizer. I mean it's not and if you put it in a compost pile and you and you work it properly it will become compost and that will be fertile like food plant nutrition but the banana peel itself is not fertilizer it's a potentially could potentially become a fertilizer all right enough about that this here is the uh, kukuzi Loki it's an Indian farmer from India who gave me the seeds and this is their third season. These things are awesome. Very generous plant. So, okay, um, back to the insects. Now, one thing that happens when, um, hey, there's a dog saying hello. See that? Hey, doggy. <laughs> one thing that uh, when you start to, to really like open your heart and you really start to love the insects. Like, I'm seriously like t saying love, like, like you know, you love. Maybe someone has a dog or a cat, and they really love their dog, and they really love their cat. Or someone really loves their their garden plants, you know, and they've opened their heart up. Well, if you do this with the insects, okay, in your garden, you you will start to have some um, intuition. Like the insect, like it's like the insect world or whatever is like starts to like put thoughts inside of you and this, t and you learn things, okay? And then you learn how, how to garden um, and how to prepare certain um, beds and uh, to favor these insects, okay? And, you, and these insects, then um, they're the ones who are part of bringing a lot of fertility into the soil, the microorganisms and the insects. And uh, these are my potatoes. They are doing really good this year. Uh, and so the, um, it's like the, the insects are like the guardians of the, uh, some sort of spiritual integrity of the uh, of the garden. They're like this, the spiritual guardians of the sacred garden or something. You know, um, some people like have the uh, are better at explaining this kind of stuff. 
I'm not too much into the uh, using these um, these cliches, you know, these esoteric cliches of the new or of the new uh, the new age religion. I'm not really into that. This is um, a stinging nettle. This year, I have plant. I have decided to plant a lot of these kinds of herbs. So I've got stinging nettles, St. John's wort. I've got bee balm, I've got um, a yarrow growing a lot, like I say a lot, I mean I have at least 50, 60 of this growing out in there everywhere. <laughs> and uh, okay, this is the front part, and it's just things are just slowly starting to, uh, to grow, and that slow is really, um... oh look at that! First time I noticed this is going to be a butternut squash. Huh? <laughs> Those are yummy. Um, so slow is really like a key word here because when you don't use artificial fertilizer and you don't use um, cow manure or compost the plants they they just grow with what what nature offers you know and uh they will grow but very slowly like very 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 slowly and um and then you and then i have a feeling that there's much more condensed um life force inside of a uh, a plant that grew slowly you mean and they're smaller you have a smaller watermelon but you end up eating the entire fruit not just a slice you know so you basically have the entire fruit and all its mineral content and everything you get a big big watermelon and as one slice is like mostly water <laughs> and then you you know um, my okra not doing it's not doing so bad got red okra and uh, I don't know the other one I forget I see I've been saving these seeds for like three years this is uh, going on year four and so I just don't remember the name of the seeds and I don't really care <laughs> strawberry patch this year is doing awesome it's um let's see if we could I, uh, <laughs> I confess that every time I come in the garden, I come here and I eat a few of them, you know. I'm very, uh, I really love, like, strawberries. And these plants, they're doing really good in this comp, this ramiel wood chip. See, and it's, the ramiel wood chip here, I put maybe a foot deep. And see, it's, it's becoming soil, right? But you see here the, um, that white little thing here? That's the uh, Basiomycetes. That is the fungi, okay, that is capable of breaking down the lignin that's inside of the uh, the wood. It's the only thing that could break down wood, and then it makes it available. Once it's that lignin is broken down, it's available for all all of the other forms of life. Oh, oh, sorry about the wind. Big tree doing really, really well. There's a little dog. It's one of those little yappy dogs. Can you see that? Huh? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> There's a lemongrass. There's a little yappy. Hey, yappy. <laughs> He's gonna think we're coming to see him. <laughs> All right, so in here, um, I put in some Jerusalem artichokes. Let's see if we can zoom up on him. Hey, yappy dog. <laughs> okay, some Jerusalem artichokes. Oh no, this is not one. They're just starting to pop up here. 
those are perennials and they're indigenous to here so um, if you never had sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes I recommend you go to your um, to your uh, alternative food store like I don't know Rouse's or Whole Food or something and try to find them they're like roots they look like ginger a little more brownish and they're really creamy they're like two birds that kind of like potatoes but they're not here's Montana and um, man I'm all over the place I make these videos you know uh, because I don't really prepare, I just like, ar I'm just archiving my, uh, my garden, so. <laughs> Usually it's very calm here. Uh, there's not lots of, there's just the birds singing. But today you, we've got the little yappy singing there. So singing nettle, um, comfrey, borage in here this year. Um, like I said, St. John's warts, but everything is just starting, you know, like, see, this, I, this is, I think, is bee balm, it's just starting, and we still got all of these wi wild um, plants growing everywhere, Swiss chard, dinosaur kale, mustard, green mustard, These are uh, beans. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so one of the things about the insects that really doesn't make sense is when you start to think about that uh, you have to kill the insects or control the insects. You know, insect control. <laughs> there is no control of the insects. You want to have as many as you as, as possible. And you know, and uh, and the funny thing is, um, this is uh, more ginger. This turmeric is just starting to come out. Okay, this... go look on. I made a video on turmeric last year. I made some. Uh... We have, we still have turmeric from last year. Bags and bags. I drew some artichokes. Okay, this is why I came here. So they're going to grow super huge and I just got these roots from Whole Food and I put them in the ground and they're going to grow really really tall. They're going to look like sunflowers which is why they call them sunchokes. And then they spread. Okay, then they die during winter and then they come back and they spread and then they die and they come back and they spread and they spread and they spread. And then first thing you know you've got more more sunchokes than, than you could possibly eat. <laughs> If you want uh, some food to grow some food that has a lot of healing potential it's got to have that plant consciousness that has been able to raise itself to a certain vibration and and I'm going to end with this what I have concluded is that the plants will do this but you they have to be um, in the arms of creation in order to be able to do this okay not the arrogant dominating human intervention then you're pushing in your small uh, small awareness and your lack of consciousness you're pushing that into the system and uh, if you uh, if you put your plants into the arms of creation then what you'll find is that uh, the insects will just become part of the whole equation and then the insects what I per I have concluded is that the insects are actually helping to spiritualize the plants okay and um, so it's like this the plants can help to spiritualize and grow and expand human consciousness and give life but the insects help grow and give life and expand the consciousness of plants I mean this is like I'm using just regular uh, terminology here it's obviously much more subtle and complex than that but in simple terms it's the plants the insects spirit the insects spiritualize the plants and the plants spiritualize man and woman 
there's a chain here and then the microorganisms uh, in the soil and the fungi are the ones that help start the process and the process is often this this latent energy that's stored in something some organic content now one of the organic content that has the most stored energy is wood and wood comes from the co2 and the sun okay so it's like the sunlight the sun being is is giving its its vibrational energy and the plant the trees are storing it and then something unlocks that energy and frees it to a whole cascade of living beings that will bring about okay the the insect world which will help bring about the vegetable world which will can feed the human being and help it heal and grow okay this is a very different point of view on gardening and the role of insects so this video is at 31 minutes so that's you that's enough i don't want to make them too long anymore all right folks so there we are i'm going to make a video uh once we're in fall and all this crop all these wonderful beautiful plants are are grown if they make it <laughs> because um they don't always make it because i don't uh i don't try to protect them at all costs like last year the deer came in and they ate most of all the sweet potato leaves and that was perfectly fine that was great you know the mom was actually a mommy and she turned out she was pregnant and she probably needed the extra protein uh, plus having the deer spirit on the, on the land huh, is like awesome I mean nice like insects are great but the deer you have deer spirit is like you you're blessed if you got deer on you and if you have deer in your garden and they're eating your your crop then feel blessed <laughs> let it eat <laughs> plant more for next year <laughs> all right folks that's it if you have any questions or comments just leave them in the box and i'll do my best to answer all right bye bye